Hi, I'm Musar, and today, let's talk about meters. What you see on screen are a whole host of visual aids for your ears. As I play notes, we can see the sound. These are indispensable for producers and sound designers and audio engineers. If you are trying to become any one of those, it's important that you are familiar with these, at the very least on a surface level, because they allow you to go beyond what your ears can sometimes hear, and they provide an extra level of insurance. I'm going to go through these one by one, top to bottom. There is even a special hidden meter on screen right now that we'll be going over at the end. And bonus points to anyone who can guess which meter I'm going to be referring to before we get to it. Starting up here at the top, we have what's called a vector scope. All of these plugins here at the front are from a VST called Signalizer. Um, it's available for free. You can get a link to that in the description below. And a vector scope is a analysis tool that provides us with a view of the stereo information on any particular piece of audio. As I play this, you can see the circle kind of shape, all the lines moving around. And as I move further up the keyboard, you can see it kind of starts to flash towards the right. I have control over the pan right here. I'm gonna play a single note. I'm gonna to start to pan it left and right, and I want you to see what happens. Keep an eye on this top meter. It becomes a single flat line now when it's completely in the right ear. And then another flat line when we move it towards the left ear. Now I'm going to start removing stereo information. It becomes kind of a straight vertical line. And then when I start uh, removing all the mid information, it starts becoming a horizontal line. So this graph is divided into four quadrants. You have plus L or positive left, plus R, positive right. Below positive left, we have negative right. And then below positive right, we have negative left. This is a display of the amplitude of both the left and right channels in terms of their positive and negative polarity. More on that once we get down to this one right here. As something is panned towards the left, it has this kind of slant to it. And then when things get panned to the right, they have this kind of slant. When something is mono, as we saw, it becomes vertical because there is no difference between the amplitudes in the left and right channels. As I play this, you can hear there's a little bit of motion to it. It has a little bit of space. And if I play the extremities of the piano, it sounds like the lowest note is closer to our left ear, whereas the highest note is closer to our right ear. So waveforms of the left and right channels are going to have to compensate for that. In case you have to sum your song to mono, these will become flat. That's where this right meter comes in. You can see as I press it, you have these two little bars moving around. There is a thicker bar and a thinner bar. If I set this to 100% mono, you see they both skyrocket up to the top. When I set it out to 100% side information, it moves to the very bottom of the graph. 
This represents the phase relationship or the phase correlation between the two channels. As the sum of the information gets closer together, this moves up. This is positive phase correlation. When it starts moving down, you have less and less. Once it starts dipping below this middle line, you get into negative phase correlation. Negative phase correlation will lead to phasing, flanging, comb filtering, and sometimes outright silence or decreased volume when your song is summed to mono. So if you see this meter start to dip down below the halfway point, you want to be aware of what happens to your song when it is collapsed to mono. You should put a mono utility plugin on your master channel and enable that so that you can hear what's happening. If there's something that you don't want to happen, you're probably going to want to fix that by adjusting the stereo image of the whatever sound you're working with. There are various tools that can do this, and that is a story for another video. Um, Signalizer has this useful meter down at the bottom. This actually shows the bias between the left and right channels. It's similar to the phase correlation meter, where as this moves towards the left or the right, the signal gets more biased towards that direction um, until you have just a completely left or right signal. So this can be useful for figuring out any inconsistencies between the left and right channels of your mix. If your whole song or a particular element seems to be too biased in one direction, maybe you could center it back up with a panning control, or maybe that's what you want. But having that knowledge is really useful. Sometimes you'll see vector scopes that look like this. This is a polar vector scope, which shows you the center left and right in a different way. This is good for seeing the panning direction of your track. This, which is called a lissajou, you can see the spelling right here, which is like the classic oscilloscope readout. I prefer this one, but you can use either. To the right of it, we have a spectrum analyzer. This is the classic what's called a spectrograph. It shows you the frequencies from low to high. The way I currently have this set up, you can see the left and right channels, or excuse me, not the left and right, but the mid and side channels as two discrete pieces of information, as well as the um, average volume of all the frequencies at a separate slower decay rate. So when I press a note, you can see three separate graphs. You see the light blue, light purple graph, which is the mid frequency or the overall frequency. You see kind of a greenish color, which is the slower decay. And then you see these purple-ish peaks, dark purple. That is the side information. This represents the frequency of your signal, whether it's the individual track or the, um, the master output from low to high. This one shows from 10 hertz all the way up to 22 kilohertz. It shows you the volume of those different frequencies. This goes as low as minus 140 decibels, 138 decibels almost up to about zero decibels, or it looks like maybe a little bit louder, maybe up to plus 10 or plus 11, looks like almost plus 12 decibels. Um, and this is good for noticing any buildups if your frequencies are peaking in any range over others. You can also see um, frequencies that are lower, or if you're, uh, Spectrum analyzer goes high enough, higher than the audible range of human hearing. For example, all of these have these rumble frequencies down here, down at 20 or 10 or 15 hertz, that they're not audible. They're thankfully not loud enough to be a problem. You can see they never really jump up above minus 100 decibels, which is essentially silence. But 
if you were having those same frequencies show up up here at minus 60, minus 40, minus 20, even higher, you might want to cut those frequencies out because they eat up headroom on your mix. Pretty much every DAW has one of these. You can see right next to us, uh, right next to my head, the, uh, the Ableton Spectrum Analyzer, which is very useful. I use these in tandem. I think they provide different visuals. This one, as you can see, I have the max amplitude curve remain. So if I want to see kind of the overall spectrum of a sound over its lifetime, that's very useful, whereas this tends to be a bit shorter term. You can have more than one, and I think sometimes having more than one can be helpful. Below that, I'm going to have the other side of the spectrum analyzer. This was a spectrograph. This is called a sonogram. And a sonogram, in terms of the spectrum analyzer, displays the same information as a spectrum, but in a different way. When you play a sound, it represents it horizontally in time. It represents it vertically in frequency, and it represents amplitude in terms of color. Black is obviously silence. The quieter the frequency, the closer to blue the color. The louder the signal, the closer to yellow and white it gets, with black being total silence and white being maximum volume. This is an amazing resource for uh, seeing how a certain sound works, for noticing inconsistencies, for noticing similar biases to uh, the spectrum analyzer on almost a finer detail view. This tends to be a bit broader. This is much more uh, specific, um, but they view different things. Uh, you can find kind of the exact frequencies a little bit better with a spectrum analyzer. And this can also show you um, a lot of things about different effects. What does a phaser look like? What does a flange look like? What does um, a saw wave versus a square wave look like? Uh, this is every. This is something that every sound designer should have. If you are making your own synthesizer patches from scratch, a sonogram and an oscilloscope are your best friends because the sonogram shows you how the different frequencies decay and how they shape, how they're ordered together and it can show you things that um, you can use later on as a resource, as well as provide information when you're listening to other songs, which I should mention. I actually listen to music with these plugins open and with the music screen streaming, excuse me, into my DAW so that uh, I can listen to it uh, with these working. And you see a lot. There's a lot of interesting details when you are looking at the song that you have been listening to on repeat for the past week, and you can see what is it that makes it tick. To the left of that, we have um, an oscilloscope, which is just a readout of whatever frequency information plus amplitude information is being presented. All of these are showing the same sort of stuff. They're just representing it in different ways. An oscilloscope is the output of essentially your amplifier. You can see that shape. That's literally what your speaker cone is doing. If I press a note, telling your speaker cone to move in and out. Just like that shape, exactly like that shape. This oscilloscope is set to show the two different stereo channels separately, but on top of each other. That's why you can see that little bit of motion there. And it also shows frequency and color. Lower frequencies are just like the sonogram, darker in color, closer to red and blue. And then higher frequencies, that kind of shifts back to blue. But you can see red on this one is low frequency. Green is mid frequencies. Blue rather than yellow is high frequencies. You can adjust in, um, yeah, you can adjust these colors so you can like make the mids more uh, yellow. You can make these more blue, more red, and more yellow to get something closer. But this can also show you different inconsistencies. It can show you flaws. It can give you an idea of how the contour of the wave is operating. 
Um, and I would say these four represent kind of the main types of meters that you'll see in your DAW, apart from one other, which we'll get to in a little bit. But before we get to that, I also want to show off Pro-L, not for the limiter, because the limiter is useful, turns up the track, but it also shows you, if you turn on this loudness control right here, the loudness of the song in loudness units. You can get three different layouts. I usually like to have it on this layout where this main knob is the integrated loudness. It's the uh, total loudness of everything since it started hearing the signal. Next to that, you have the momentary and the short term, which are two smaller time scales. And you can see how loud or quiet track is, as well as the loudness range. Which is very useful when mastering. There are other things that have this. I think Yulian Loudest Meter is one. Um, I think Isotope Insight has this, and I believe there are free ones available. Um, if you know of any, please mention those in the comments below. Thank you, because I, I certainly don't remember. And then, the very last meter, arguably one of the most important meters, so we're saving the best for last, is your volume meter right here. Almost every DAW has a readout like this. This shows you the amplitude of your track in both the left and right channels in three different time frames. On Ableton, this small green line that hangs around at the very top, that's the uh, resting peak. That is the absolute highest point. I don't know if it's actually called resting peak, so I shouldn't say that. That's the peak value. <laughs> um, that is the absolute highest point that the sound has been in since the meter last heard the sound. You can see it's slowly coming down. But as I move it around, that's the maximum amplitude that this particular signal has gotten. The darker green that you see kind of in there, that is the momentary peak. That's sort of where it's at, whatever at that moment may be, or excuse me, that's the volume at whatever that exact moment is. This is the highest, that's where it's at. Green is the average volume, the RMS. Over time, about how loud is this signal? As you can see, those are all three very different parameters. So, you know, being able to see what's going on and also seeing the different gradients of volume can give you information when dealing with an entire mix down. If this volume seems to be too high compared with this one, you can see it. If you see the peak value kind of moving over zero, even though the overall value seems to be down here at minus six or minus 12, maybe you can use a soft clipper or a limiter to contain that. This was one of the first things that most people got used to, so that's why I saved it for last, but it is still one of the most important, if not the most important meter that you have access to. But that's about it for me. Can't think of much else to say on this subject, so if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you like this video, please like, <laughs> comment, and subscribe. Um, if you want to see my content more regularly, you can find me on Twitch streaming five days a week. And if you want me to make these videos more regularly, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find a link to that in the description below as well. Thank you again and have a great day. Bye.